Well, two years ago, when the Narendra Modi government came to power, they promised to introduce high-speed train network in India, much on the lines of what China has. Back in 2014, enthused by this announcement, we did a reality check of where our railway network was and what does China boast of. Anjana Om Kashyap went on board the Chinese bullet train while Simi Pasha went on a journey on our good old Shatabdi Express. And here is what we found. A high-speed rail network with over 11,000 kilometers of track in service, where trains move faster than a speeding bullet. This is what the Chinese have been able to achieve, breaking milestones in record speed as the country powers towards breathtaking levels of development in the sector. The high-speed rail network today connects more than 100 cities with trains clocking more than 300 kilometers in an hour. And this is us, chugging along at snail pace. A giant network, the Indian Railways has a track length of more than 1,15,000 kilometers, spread over a distance of 65,000. With over 7,500 stations, our trains ferry more than 24 million passengers daily. As Prime Minister Narendra Modi gives a green signal for a high-speed corridor between Ahmedabad and Mumbai, Headlines today carries out a ground check to ascertain the distance we have to cover to realize our speed dream. We start on parallel journeys to draw a comparison between us and them. Narendra Modi started out by selling tea outside a train station. And as Prime Minister, he has plans of reviving the Indian railways, introducing high-speed engines worthy of our economy. But what are the challenges that Narendra Modi faces? We're going to find out on our journey, starting from New Delhi. Our destination is Jaipur. We're at the railway station and we're waiting inside to get the tickets. But till then, I could roughly show you what this looks like. Yes, very interestingly, what we see at the airports in India, I'm seeing at the railway station. The kind of air hostesses you see there are ready to help people. The same kind of people here to ready, uh, help the passengers. And this is the real picture. Yes, sounds very interesting and very promising. So we're ready for the stunner, the bullet. Let's go. A fully air-conditioned station, airport-type baggage and security checks and state-of-the-art interiors. This is what we're competing against. Back home at the New Delhi Railway Station, the poor state of facilities come as no surprise. While looking for a glass of clean drinking water at the New Delhi Railway Station, this is what the station has to offer. Do you, would you like to drink out of uh, these taps? Look at the surrounding area, extremely dirty. There's no one who's cleaned this uh, for hours at end. The option that you have is to buy a bottle of drinking water. It would lead to more littering and clearly it's not more eco-friendly. To board a train, you have to go up a long flight of stairs. There are no elevators and the escalators are often out of order. You have to wrestle your way through a sea of humanity, moving between New Delhi railway stations, 16 platforms. It's obviously not something that senior citizens and physically disabled persons can do without being hugely inconvenienced. The platforms are often lined with garbage and there are no provisions to keep stray animals away from the railway tracks. Meanwhile, back in Shanghai, it's a smooth ride across platforms for Anjana. From the railway station, we've reached the platform and it's now my turn to get into the bullet train and feel the experience of 350 kilometers per hour. Yes, we're boarding and it's number eight. So now it's time to get into the bullet. So Tabdis and Rajasthanis are some of the best trains that the Indian Railways uh, can boast of. But can they match up to the high quality bullet trains in China? We're about to board the Ajmer Rajasthani to Jaipur. Let's find out. The interiors of the Shanghai Beijing Super Express are extremely impressive. Overhead baggage compartments like you have on flights ensure all luggage is safely tucked in before takeoff. 
no leaking ACs, no garbage on the floor and no paint stains. The bullet trains aren't just fast, they're also spotlessly clean, offering a world-class travel experience. The picture is for you to see. Luxury, comfort, style and speed all together on the bullet. But let's compare with the Indian Railways. Actually, Indian Railways has become the picture of filth, dirt, train accidents, discomfort. So the comparison is for you to see. But the big thing is that we're on the train from Shanghai to Beijing, roughly 13 to 1400 kilometers, and we're going to cover it in a time span of about four and a half hours, which means we're already reaching a speed of 300 kilometers per hour. Back on the Delhi Jaipur Shatabdi, we are booked on an executive class coach. It's the best high speed train that the country has to offer, but it's a bumpy ride. Chinese bullet trains are very smooth. A lot of times you can't even make out that you're on the move. Uh, let's try and see if uh, Indian trains are equally stable. I have these two batteries here with me. I'm going to place them on this tray and see if they're able to survive the jitters. Uh, clearly now this is what you have to deal with while uh, traveling while eating also it's a problem where you're having a sip of coffee and suddenly there's a jolt you can spill it all over this is not something you have to encounter in uh, bullet trains that are being promoted in china even as the train races at 300 kilometers per hour immense speed let's do a little reality check on the kind of stability you have inside the bullet train i have with me two batteries let's place them here on the floor and let's see how it goes here I've placed both the bat batteries on the floor and by the movement you can understand how stable it is inside the train. The Chinese high-speed train offers a range of cuisine to choose from. You have a little kiosk here like you can shop for coffee if you want fruits you can shop from here. So it's complete fun for people who are traveling on the bullet. It's my turn now so I need one black coffee and uh, what about this? Maybe I can take this, one of this. We're next to the pantry and this is what it looks like. We'll just look at a rough picture. Food plates, well packed, pre-cooked, are all being checked in the pantry. No such facilities on our Shatabdi. Half an hour into our journey and the service begins. The food cart rolls into the compartment and the catering staff starts handing out water bottles along with coffee and tea sachets. <laughs> This is a luxury that is available only on Shatabdis and Rajthanis. The morning coffee is followed by breakfast, packaged by Meals on Wheels. The quality of food in the Shatabdi does meet your bare minimum requirements, but it's nothing special. I've ordered a vegetarian breakfast. I've got uh, cutlets and two slices of brown bread, a little bit of butter. There's also an option of South Indian breakfast, but if you're looking for anything high-end, it's not available even on one of uh, India's finest trains. And we are not the only ones drawing comparisons between the Chinese Dragon and the Indian Snail Rail. 29-year-old Aman Gulati is a regular customer of the Indian Railways. As India toys with the idea of introducing a high-speed diamond quadrilateral, Aman says the need of the hour is to improve existing infrastructure rather than investing in new ventures. Better concentrate on uh, you know um, improvising the services for the users, especially uh, rather than going for just trial for you know some bullet trains or something, which is actually which takes a lot of you know investment. As far as uh, our country is concerned, uh, we don't have that much extra cost money with the government, like uh, you know. So first, he should better concentrate on improving these uh, prison services, so that user may feel like yes, uh, you know, we are using the best services because we have the largest network in the world. And Aman is not the only unhappy customer on board. At times, in, I see in this uh, executive class, uh, there's there's a leakage in the compartment. There's from uh, leakages there from the uh, from the top. Then the, uh, while returning, you see the condition of uh, the the quality of food stuff which is served in the in the evening. That's that's not up to the mark. Simply not up to the mark. We compare ourselves to the world class kind of railways. We can, uh, we want to have uh, bullet trains. We want to have. No second thought, we should actually have. This is a time when we should have all these things. But we really need to understand the existing infrastructure that needs a lot of maintenance, that needs a lot of elevation. Unless that's there, we can 
how can we just think of something else beyond this very simple message to mr modi that uh, basics like focus on basics like they we have enough network we are the world's largest network we need basic civics like you know cleaning sanitation securities this required just discipline but they are thinking of bullet trains and all that इनको जो एग्जिस्टिंग फैसिलिटीज़ हैं उनको तो इम्प्रूव करें बाद में ये बुलेट ट्रेन की बात करें अब जो एग्जिस्टिंग फैसिलिटी इनसे मेंटेन नहीं हो रही और वो भी इतनी गंदी हो रही हैं कि आदमी खड़े होने में इट वाज डिफिकल्ट टू स्टैंड इधर प्लेटफॉर्म पर उठापन आर आई वॉज वेटिंग फॉर द ट्रेन इतना गंदा है One of the largest rail networks of the world, the Indian Railways ferries 8900 million passengers annually, but it's found shockingly lacking in basic amenities. Hygiene and sanitation are issues that most passengers complain about. Let's take a look at the kind of uh, toilets that are available on the Shatabdi, one of the finest trains that India has to offer. There's water spilled over the toilets are obviously stinking. Why is it that uh, our trains have to serve like a moving litter box? Why can't we have suction toilets that are available on the flights as well? If you look, uh, if you compare our toilets to those available on the bullet trains, there's a marked difference. This is something that the Indian uh, railways needs to focus on. Make uh, travel becomes extremely inconvenient if you have dirty toilets. These are long journeys that people have to undertake, and it's extremely uncomfortable if you don't have access to a clean bathroom. No such complaints coming from passengers on the Chinese bullet who are literally pampered while on the move. I, I want to give you a rough feel of this place between two compartments. There are fire extinguishers in case of any emergency at every second step you find them. Then in case you want to throw something, these are all closed cables and you can put your thing into the dustbin. Very neatly done, very neatly organized so that the train remains absolutely clean. But now from here, we will move on to the next part. Because uh, I want to give you a feel of what the toilets and the washrooms here look like. Interestingly, very small but clean. You can say it gives you a feel of the kind of uh, washrooms we've seen in our aeroplanes. The vacuum suction flush systems are in place. The ones that you have on the aeroplanes, and definitely not in Indian railways. So with this, you can understand the kind of system that is in place. Roughly the other side here. the soap wash everything is in place so you get a feel of actually coming to a neat and tidy place every 5 to 10 minutes there's a woman who comes here to do the cleaning prime minister modi's proposal of unveiling a diamond quadrilateral connecting the four metros with trains rolling at 320 kilometers per hour has got passengers dreaming about a faster future On board the Shanghai Beijing Express, Anjana is able to cover 1318 kilometers in under 5 hours by traveling at a speed of 330 kilometers per hour. Back home the journey from Delhi to Jaipur, which is roughly 270 kilometers, takes almost as long. Speed is a huge issue for the Indian Railways. We are on board one of the fastest trains uh, in the country, the Shatabdi Express. But this train also covers the distance between Jaipur and Delhi, which is approximately 300 kilometers in four and a half hours. If you compare this timing to that of the bullet train in China, the Chinese bullet train would have covered this distance in only one hour. So I have my coffee and my fruits in my hand, but very interestingly, at the speed of 300 kilometers per hour, I had no problem in moving around here. There is no problem of holding on to the sides or the coffee just pouring over. Hi. So the coffee pouring over, all that is not a menace actually inside this train, in spite of the fact that we are moving at a speed of 300 kilometers per hour. But apart from speed, there are more pressing issues that need to be addressed. Harvinder Pal Singh has been working with the Indian Railways for more than three decades. A ticket collector who is part of the Rajdhani Shatabdi crew, Paul says the absence of railway police officials on board worries him. इस रूट पे पुलिस है ही नहीं। इसके बारे में हम हाई थर्टीज को काफी बार लिख चुके हैं, लेकिन पर्टिकुलर अजमेर शतावदे में जहाँ फॉरेनर्स वगैरह काफी लोग आते हैं, क्योंकि अजमेर श्री बहुत बड़ी दरगाह है, जहाँ ज़ियारत करने हर लोग जाते हैं और सिक्योरिटी नहीं है बाकी और चेतावनियों में हमारी आरपीएफ की सिक्योरिटी है
journey from Shanghai to Beijing is just over for me. But for India, the journey has just begun. Our journey finally comes to an end at the Jaipur railway station. Lots of expectations from Prime Minister Narendra Modi. Lots of recommendations that people have as to how the Indian railways can be revived. The challenge has been set. Modi's time starts now. Well, you're watching Bullet vs. Snail Train, our special presentation of the comparative study of the Indian Railways with the Chinese Bullet Train. Now, before the break, we brought to you our comparative study done in 2014. Now, we will revisit what Rahul Kaval found out on his trip on board the Chinese Bullet Train last year. This is the pride of China, its high-speed train network. And to get a sense of just how these fast trains move, and whether or not it makes sense for India to be investing in purchasing these trains from China. We're traveling this morning from Beijing to Xi'an. This is a journey that earlier used to take more than a full day. Now it takes only five hours. For the People's Republic of China, building the world's largest super-fast rail network has been closely linked to the country's booming global ambition. In the early 1990s, the average passenger train in China ran at a speed of only 48 km per hour. Roads were badly congested and people were forced to fly even for short journeys. It was in 1999 that China began building its first high-speed rail corridor. Within 15 years, China has already built a national network that's bigger than all the high-speed corridors of the world put together. At the time of independence, the Indian rail network was 54,000 kilometers, while the Chinese network was only 27,000 kilometers. The Indian railways was twice the size of the Chinese railways. But since then, the Chinese have more than quadrupled their total rail network, while India has been able to increase its rail network by only 11,000 kilometers. Way back in the late 19th century, the Indian Railways was laying rail tracks in different parts of Africa and even looking at the possibility of building a rail line to China via Burma. The scales have completely turned since and now the Indian Railways has a lot of catching up to do. When Prime Minister Modi announced his quest for a high-speed rail corridor linking India's biggest cities, questions were asked about whether it's worth spending the kind of money that's required to fund this expensive dream. Even in China, a hot debate raged over whether or not it was worth investing huge sums of money on a project that could not be afforded by a majority of the people in the country. According to conservative estimates, the total cost of funding China's high-speed rail corridor has been upwards of a whopping $300 billion in the past decade and a half. The cost of a single high-speed train ticket from Beijing to Xi'an is 824 yuan. That's about eight and a half thousand rupees, which is more than the cost of a air ticket from Delhi to Mumbai. The train is traveling at 295 kilometers per hour. It stays in the range of about 290 to 300. We're zipping through the countryside of Beijing, but this indeed is one expensive luxury. China's early high-speed trains were imported or built under technology transfer agreements with foreign train makers like Alstom, Siemens, Bombardier and Kawasaki Heavy Industries. Chinese engineers then redesigned internal train components and built indigenous trains that can reach operational speed of up to 380 km per hour. The average speed on these trains at present is 200 km per hour. China already has the world's longest high-speed rail corridor, which is about 10,000 kilometers at present. But that does not restrict the scale of China's future ambitions. The country now wants to build a 7,000 kilometer long rail line connecting Beijing and Moscow. This would go through China, Kazakhstan and Russia and would be thrice as long as the longest high-speed train corridor anywhere in the world. In the build-up to Prime Minister Modi's visit to Beijing, Chinese authorities have been pushing for a pilot project to showcase the country's high-speed prowess to the Indian people. China is currently conducting a feasibility study for the $36 billion, 1,754-kilometer Delhi-Chennai high-speed corridor. China wants to speed up the implementation of a shorter high-speed rail corridor from Chennai to Bengaluru and from Delhi to Agra, even while the feasibility study is going on. 
the announcement by Prime Minister Modi that India too will be developing its own high-speed rail corridor has led to immense competition between Chinese and Japanese companies. A recent World Bank study says that the per kilometer cost of the Chinese high-speed rail network is about one-third cheaper than its Japanese, American and European counterparts. Every kilometer of the high-speed rail network in China costs about $20 million. In California, this cost goes up to as much as $56 million. While there's a huge cost advantage with setting up a high-speed rail network with Chinese companies, the thing to consider from India's perspective is whether we are willing to hand over as sensitive an infrastructure sector as the railways to Chinese companies. Railway Minister Suresh Prabhu has announced that the government is seeking $137 billion worth of investments in the Indian railways over the next five years. Japan and France are the other countries bidding for a share of modernizing India's rail system, which is the fourth largest in the world. 20 years ago, platforms across China were just as dirty and overcrowded as platforms in India today. These high-speed rail networks, people say, have made China a smaller country and brought people closer together. What the Chinese have shown is immense willpower and ambition to change the face of their railways. In India, what we've seen so far is talk. Let's see if some of that talk begins to translate into action. With camera person Kirpal Singh, this is Rahul Kavul at the Xi'an Railway Station reporting for headlines today. Well, this would be the Modi government's third rail budget and we are waiting. There are minute changes or betterment that one finds in big junctions today in India. But we certainly are miles away from what we aspire to be or where we need to reach to boast of a rail network that's not just the largest in the world, but also modern, efficient, fast and clean. That's all that we have for you in the special presentation of Bullet versus Snail Train. Keep watching here today for news and updates.